In this video, we're going to be solving equations with any root or any power, nth roots and nth powers. Um, seeing what weird things happen when we do that. Uh, real quick, just some review on how we solve. We always want to get our variable by itself, or x in this case, by itself. In order to do that, we usually do PEMDAS backwards, or SADMEP. And in this case, since we're dealing with roots and powers, we're going to undo powers. And we're going to undo radicals. To undo powers, we use reciprocals. So if we're dealing with fractional powers, use the reciprocal to undo it. And we can undo roots using powers. So whatever root it is, undo it using the same power. And then we're always going to do this last step. It's important when dealing with radicals and fractional exponents that we check our solutions and we're going to check the things called extraneous solutions. They're false solutions, things that come out when we solve that we think may be solutions but when we check it they end up not really working so we can't use them. Alright, so make sure we keep all of this in our head. It's kind of complicated. The more we practice the better we get at it. Let's do some examples. If I try and take the cube root of x and subtract 4, since we're solving we're going to set an equation equal to 0. And to solve it we would do sad map, so we'd have to take care of the subtraction by adding 4 to both sides. Now we got our variable by itself. To undo our radical, we would use a power. So since it's a cube root, if we cube both sides, we can undo everything around that x. We get x by itself. And we just simplify 4 cubed. That's 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. Um, check a couple things. We add a odd root, so we only had one real solution. Well, that's what we got. If I plug it back in, the cube root of 64 is 4. And 4 minus 4 is 0. So it checks out. That's a true solution. Let's do another example. get x by itself, undo everything around it, so we got to undo this multiplication by 2. Let's divide both sides by 2. 250 divided by 2 is 125. Now we can do one of two things. If you don't like doing math with your fractional exponents, you could go in a radical form. That would be the square root uh, oops, square root of x cubed equals 125. But we also know how to undo fractional exponents. If we multiply everything by the reciprocal of that, we have 3 halves, and we multiply by 2 thirds, and we do it to both sides. Well, when we multiply our fractions here, we end up getting 1 get x to the first, that's what we want, so that undoes itself. And over here we have the cubed root of 125 squared. Cube root of 125 squared. Cube root of 125 is 5 and 5 squared is 25. And again we're taking uh, odd roots of things, so we're only getting one, one real root. Uh, if we plug it back in and check it, we got 25 to the 3 halves power. So that's the square root of 25, which is 5, cubed, which is 125. And 125 times 2 is 250. So we checked it. Let's do another example. The 
getting a little more complicated under a radical here. So again, to undo everything around our x, take care of our addition here by subtracting 2. So now we have the square root of 4x minus 7 equals 3. So to undo this radical here, it's a square root. So to undo it, we could square both sides. That gets rid of our radical, and we're left with what's underneath. 3 squared is 9. Keep on doing things around x, add 7. So 4x equals 16. And get rid of that multiplication by 4 by dividing by 4. And we get x is 4. Um, we didn't take the square root, we undid a square root. Let's check our solution. If we, if we plug x, or 4 in for x. So we get 4 times 4, that's 16. 16 minus 7 is 9. So we got the square root of 9 plus 2 equals 5. Now when I take the square root of 9, since I'm not solving anymore, I'm just checking my solution. I'm going to use the positive uh, square. So 3, and 3 plus 2 equals 5. So it checks out. Let's try another example. Here's an example where we have a radical... We have more than one radical on one side of an equation that we're trying to solve. If this ever happens, we can't, a lot of people might want to try and square both sides, and we can't do that. There's not a property that says that that's true. In fact, if we tried to square this, this would be squaring a binomial. We'd have to rewrite both of these twice, FOIL, um, and we'd end up not really getting rid of our radicals. So, in this case, you must get one radical on each side of the equation before you square both sides. So, in order to do that, if I add 2 times the square root of x to both sides, it gets rid of it over here. We have radicals on either side. Now we can square both sides. We're allowed to do that and get rid of our radicals that way. Over on the left side, I squared my square root. I'm left with 3x plus 2. On the right side, I got to distribute this exponent so I get 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times the square root of x squared, so that undoes the square root. I'm just left with x. So the right side you got to remember to distribute there. Keep solving for x if I subtract 3x. And I get 2 equals 1x or x. So I've solved. If I plug it back in to check, 3 times 2 instead of x here is 6. 6 plus 2 is the square root of 8. Over here if I plug in 2, and I get 2 times the square root of 2. So you might be thinking, oh, well, this isn't going to work out. But if we simplify the square root of 8, if we factor that down to 4 times 2 and take out the square root of 4, then we get 2 times the square root of 2. And if we subtract 2 times the square root of 2, well, then that does, in fact, equal 0, and it checks out. All right, let's do another example. In this example, we're going to see how um, checking our answer is really important. It seems like everything's been working out so far, but here's our curveball. Let's try and solve this one. If I undo my radical on the right side, it's a square root. I can square both sides. But on the left side, hopefully you realize you're squaring a binomial here. So we get x minus 4 times x minus 4. We've got to FOIL that. On the right side, we squared a square root, and so we are left with 2x. Let's FOIL, we get x squared 
minus 4x minus 4x plus 16 still equals 2x. Combine your middle terms, we get negative 8x. So x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 2x. We're solving, so we want everything on one side. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And when I do that, I get x squared minus 10x plus 16 equals 0. So since I want to solve for x, we can try and factor this to solve for x. We could always use our quadratic equation or formula if we want. Um, let's try and factor. So factors of 16, positive 16, that add up to negative 10. Well, 8 and 2 come to mind, and if I make them both negative, they add up to negative 10, and then they multiply to positive 16. So give each of your parentheses an x. You can FOIL to check, but I'm positive or right. And so if we set that equal to 0, set each set of your parentheses equal to 0 x minus 8 equal to 0, add 8 to both sides, you get x is positive 8. If we set our other set of parentheses equal to 0 and add 2 to both sides, we get x equals 2. So x equals 8 and 2. Well, you know, we have two solutions here to check. Let's plug them back in and see what happens. If I check 8, um, let's get back to our original equation here just to make sure. minus 4 times the square root of 2x. That's what we started with. So that's what we'll be checking. So 8 minus 4. 8 minus 4 is 4. And then if I plug 8 in over here for this x, we got 16. 8 times 2 is 16. The square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. But since we're just checking, we're going to use the positive, positive root. And 4 equals 4, so 8 checks out. Everything's good so far. Let's plug in 2 now. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And if I plug, plug 2 in for the x right here, I get 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And again, since we're checking, we're not going to use the negative, so it doesn't check out. Negative 2 does not equal positive 2. So 2 is what is referred to as extraneous, or a false solution. Um, normally we won't include it in our answers, and we would just say that x is 8. And sometimes you might be asked to include the extraneous, so then you would list it as 2. Let's try and do one more example here. I'm using our powers. If I want to solve for x in this example, we would get rid of this multiplication by 3 first, so divide both sides by 3. And 243 divided by 3 is 81. So now to undo this uh, power right here, we can multiply by the reciprocal. So 3 fourths. And so on the left, we undid that. We got x to the first. But on the right, we need to solve this. It's the fourth root of 81 cubed. So we need to be careful and remember that if we're taking an even root of a number and solving, we want to include both, both positive and negative roots. So the fourth root of 81 is 3, but we want to say plus or minus 3. And we want to cube them both. So positive 3 cubed would be 27. And negative 3 cubed would be negative 27. So we really get positive and negative 27 when we solve this equation. And if we check it, the positive 27, uh, we would take the cubed root of 27, which is 3, and bring it to the power of 4, so that's 81. 81 times 3 is 243. So the positive checks out. The negative checks out just the same. I'm going to run out of time, so that one's up to you. See you in the next video.